Greetings to you once again in the name of Yashua Hamashia and uh, welcome you to this YouTube channel for our weekly first day of the week manna. Uh, today we'll uh, have a new topic. Uh, we'll see about the numerology in the Bible uh, which is also very important. So today we'll talk on those uh, subjects. The topic for today is uh, Matthew chapter 10 30 the very heads of your head are all numbered the very heads of your head are all numbered so under this we have uh, the main under the main topic we'll have three small topics first one is uh, we'll see about numbered in the bible second we'll see about palmony uh, and third, we'll see about the meaning of numbers. Uh, we'll have 1 to 14. Uh, all the meanings of the numbers we'll uh, see from the scriptures so that you may be able to know this numeric numerology in the scriptures so that uh, you may give all glory to God because ultimately it is the, uh, it is He who does everything. So therefore, we need to give all glory to God uh, so before we could start the uh, message, let's bow our heads and pray that God may give us wisdom and understanding to understand His word. Father of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, the true and the living God, we honor thee, praise thee, exalt thee, Yahshua HaMashiach, my Lord and my Savior. As we break this word, Lord, we pray thou may give us fathers, Revelation, he was the wisdom of God, help us to rightly divide the word of truth and help us to have righteous judgments, decisions, so that all glory may come to thee, Lord. We may not, we may not use our mind, Lord, but we may seek the help of the Holy Ghost to understand thy great word. That let the mind of Christ be in us, that we may be able to understand the word, Lord. By all parts of darkness, none of those evil force may have power. That your great name be exalted, Lord. Thank you for this time. We commit everything to the hand. Bless all those who are going to listen. And Lord, bless me also that I am able to speak the word, Lord. Thank you for hearing us. For we ask all these things in the blessed, sweet, holy, excellent name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So today we'll see a new topic. Uh, that is the very hairs of your head are all numbered mentioned in Matthew chapter 10 verse 13. Now the first topic uh, under that will be number. Now there are three Hebrew words for number or numbered. In Genesis 15 5 when you read it the Hebrew word is uh, kafar. Kafar means to record. Then in Genesis 34, 30, there is a word mikpah, which means narration or measure. And in Exodus 12, 4, there is another word mikha. Uh, it means valuation. But in Greek, uh, when we read this Matthew chapter 10, 30, where it is written, the very heads of your head are all numbered. The Greek word for that number is arithmio, which means to count. Now from that word arithmio came the word arithmetic. So Elohim or Theos, Theos is the Greek word for God, is a great arithmetician or mathematician who introduced numbers in the very first chapter of the book of Genesis. The whole Bible of 66 books written by 33 writers contains numbers. The scriptural arithmetic is not an accident or by chance but surely the work of the Almighty God, the El Shaddai. 
Psalms 92 5 says, O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. In Psalms 147 4, it says, He telleth the number of the stars, He calleth them all by their names. So He knows how many stars are there, we do not know. He knows how many hairs are there, we do not know. But everything is numbered and that's why he knows the stars, the number of stars and he calls them all by their names. So therefore, God has also numbered uh, the word of God. Now we'll see this is all about numbered. I showed you from the scriptures, the Hebrew and the Greek. So it is uh, essential that when we study the word, we may know the numerics. <clears throat> Sorry, the numerology, so that it may be a great blessing to you. The second subtopic is about Talmani. This name you may be hearing, some of them may be hearing first time, but it is mentioned in the Bible. So the word Talmani is mentioned in Daniel chapter 8 13. Uh, in the reference Bible, all those who have the reference Bible, when you check the reference of Daniel chapter 8, 13, there it is written the wonderful numberer Talmani. Uh, there are two Hebrew words, Pele means wonderful, Mana means numbered. God himself is wonderful according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. However, the numbering work was delegated to an angel, Palmani. Not much spoken among the believers. Many believers, uh, servants of God, doesn't know uh, that there is an angel by name Palmani. But it is there in the scripture. He has been delegated this work of numbering in the Bible. And that's why the 66 books of the Bible showed a pattern of numbers and divs, a divisibility that no other writings had and well arranged to our surprise. When you read the scriptures, you will come across threes and sevens quite often. Every Hebrew and Greek word has numerical value. So this was the job of Talmani, one of the angel. Uh, who are called in uh, who is called in Daniel chapter 8 13 a saint so his job was to do numbering in the Bible that's why every scripture is numbered so whether you read the Old Testament or the New Testament whether it is Hebrew or Greek everything is numbered and that's why uh, Bible is a perfect book so that he can make you and me sinful people perfect through his word. That's why uh, we need to understand about numerology or the numeric. Now we'll go to the third subtopic, the meaning of numbers. Today we'll see 14 numbers in the Bible. Each number, what is the meaning and the scriptures related to that. We'll see it so that you may be able to understand that God has recorded everything in the scriptures. And that's why we need to know that. So each number has got a meaning. So the number one, number one points out to God himself. That is the oneness of God. That's why there are few scriptures that you see. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four says, Hero Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So God is not two or three, God is only one. Throughout the Bible that you see that it is mentioned that God is one. Polytheism belief of more than one God started by Nimrod. So from Babel it started and it came then to Babylon and then you see that it traveled and uh, Romanism picked it up. And therefore today we see the churches, most of the churches believe that God is three. Father is different, Son is different, Holy Spirit is different, first person, second person, third person. 
but bible says he is the very person that's why here it says hero is right the lord our god is one lord in malachi chapter 2 verse 10 says hath not one god created us everywhere you see it is written himself it never it has never been written that themselves it is always written himself so hath not one god created us in ephesian chapter 4 verse 6 it says one god and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all that's what the scripture says another scripture in the book of james when you read it here it says james chapter 2 19 says thou believers that there is one god thou do as well or thou dost well the devil also believe so devil knows that there is only one god and he trembled but he is the one who teaches people that god is three or god is two he is the one who teaches though he knows that god is one that's why the scripture says the devils also know that there is one god and he trembles but uh, the christians don't believe neither do they tremble but the devil believes that there is one god and he trembles so therefore one belongs to god number one it is oneness of god and that's why now one number pertains to god that is all we have seen there are many scriptures but i have only taken few now we'll go to number 2 Two in the Bible is witness. That's why Jesus Christ sent two by two to preach the gospel. Two is a witness. When we read Deuteronomy chapter nineteen fifteen, it says, "One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin in any sin that he sinned at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses." shall the matter be established this is the scripture moses wrote unto the children of israel in the new testament yashua the messiah in john chapter 8 17 says it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true now this was spoken by messiah himself then paul one of the greatest preachers selected by god chosen by god for the gentile nations while speaking to the corinthian church paul says in second corinthian 13:1 he says this is the third time i am coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established so number 1 pertains to god number 2 is witness i will go to number 3 number 3 uh, means completion or fullness number 3 means completion or fullness in genesis chapter 6 16 when you read it you see when god commanded noah to build an ark he told noah to make three stories so there was lower second and third stories thou shall make it so three uh story building uh or the ark you see that it was uh three stories were there so therefore uh it is a complete work god has done through noah then again in genesis chapter 9 19 says these are the three sons of noah and of them was the whole earth overspread so after the flood when noah and his family came out through them bible says the whole earth overspread so you see that uh, the three sons ham shem and japhet you see ham through them came africans and indians through shem came all the jewish people and through jaffet all the european countries that you see 
they all came from there so therefore uh, through these three suns the whole earth overspread then in colossian chapter 2:9 uh, the scripture says for in him dwelleth all the fullness of god and bodily so the body consists of three things the human body that is body soul and spirit that's why in the tabernacle when you see in the old testament there is outer court holy place most holy place that's why god told noah to make three stories lower second and third and it all points out to body soul and spirit it is also about outer court holy place most holy place it is also when you read hebrew chapter 13 verse 8 says yesterday today and forever yesterday today and forever so it is completion or it is the fullness so that is uh, number 3 as we move forward now we'll see number 4 number 4 is the number of the world now when god created uh, everything in the very first book of genesis chapter 1 on the fourth day he created sun moon and stars so the fourth day god created sun moon and stars now why did he create that it says it is for signs for seasons for days and for years you can read it in genesis chapter 1 14 to 19 when you read it there it is mentioned that god created on the fourth day sun moon and stars and it was for signs for seasons days and for years that's why the bible is a beautiful book everything is mentioned there you need to read and understand it so that uh, uh, your faith increases and you will be able to love god more than ever before because everything god has written in the scriptures so in isaiah chapter 11 verse 12 says four corners of the earth and the same thing is also mentioned in revelation chapter 7 verse 1 that's why there are four corners of the world in mark chapter 16 15 god said go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature that's why you see every nation the bible is there and his name yashua's name is being preached uh, even in these last days so that's why in troublous times also you see that this name is preached because salvation is only through the name of yeshua hamashiah there is no other name that's why it is already written in the gospel of mark go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature so every creature has to be preached whether they accept or not that's a different thing but the gospel has to be preached and that's why the number 4 it is the number of the world now without god life is of no use so you are a man of the world it is of no use unless you know who your creator is so god is a living god he is not uh, a stone or gold or silver He is a living person his name is yashwa the messiah so the world is number 4 so everybody has got this number but they need to know that there is a creator and he is yashwa the messiah that's why when we go to the next number number 5 number 5 is the number of grace keep that in mind that uh, number 4 is the number of the world number 1 is god so 4 plus 1 is equal to 5 so we who are in the world without god life is miserable but when that one comes in you you become five you come under grace of god otherwise we are without grace and that's why any body any time they can die without salvation but we people in the world when we accept 
one God, then the grace comes upon us. That's why 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. 4 is the number of the world. 1 is God. So when 1 comes in the life of a man who is in the world, he comes under the grace of God. You know, this number 5, it's a grace. You see that uh, in Exodus chapter 13, verse 18, there is a word written there, harnessed. If we check the Hebrew meaning, harnessed means by five in a rank. So when the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, they were uh, walking in a rank of five. That's how you see the military parade and all those things. All this has come from the Bible. That's why they were walking by five. So you see that uh, they were following uh, all the instructions and uh, this is mentioned in the Bible. They were not walking in, in any way, but they were walking in a rank of five. So you see that there was five, behind them there is five, behind them five, so like that they were. So it is like a, a march pass you see that, that you see today in the world, in school, in military and all these places, this is all from the Bible. That's why harness means by five in a rank. In John chapter 1, 16, 17 says, And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. So we receive grace, not because of our goodness. We all had number four in our life. We were supposed to die, had not we known the true and the living God. When we knew him, we came under the grace. That's why in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. So the grace God has given us, uh, it is a gift. Uh, because by grace you are saved, not by works, not uh, because of our goodness. We are all sinners saved by His grace and that's why it is a gift of God. So today we are under the grace of God. Therefore we must uh, be thankful to God that uh, we are this number four, we are of the world. But when that one God came in our life, we became five. The grace of God is upon us and that's why we need to thank God that out of millions he has chosen you and me to know that there is a true and living God and that's why when we are under grace he will definitely protect you, guard you from all pestilence and all kind of problems. So that is number five. Now we move on to number six. Number six is man under sin or man imperfect. Man under sin or imperfect. When you read Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 31, you see there that man was created on the sixth day. Man was created on the sixth day. The last day that you see the creations. Uh, he created man on the sixth day. Then in Exodus chapter 20 verse 9 says, Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. So it is a six day working days. What we see today in the world, it has all come from the Bible. So six working days. It is also mentioned in Ezekiel. Uh, another important thing that you see that Jonah uh, in his life, he is going six times he went down. You can read it in the Bible, first time in uh, chapter 1, Jonah chapter 1 verse 3. Second time again you see that Jonah chapter 1 3. Third time again Jonah chapter 1 verse 5. Fourth time uh, mentioned in Jonah chapter 115 
and uh, fifth time 117 and uh, sixth time mentioned in uh, Jonah chapter 2 uh, 6 so down means it is all hell so he was going down in his life because he was uh, disobeying God uh, as I said he first went down to Joppa uh, then uh, he again went down uh, in the ship that is the second thing that you see there uh, third time in verse 5 says uh, he went uh, down in the ship uh, in the sense uh, the last compartment of the ship he went down again uh, then uh, 15 verse chapter 1 verse 15 says Jonah was put in the sea so he went down in the sea uh, then in uh, 117 says he went on, uh, in the belly of the fish so all the time he was going down and then in second chapter verse 6 says he went into the bottom of the mountains uh, bible says so he went into the bottom so this is the these are the six times he is going down because he refused to obey god's commandment he wanted to die because he being a jew he never wanted to preach to the gentiles so that's the whole story here but God saw that his work was done and ultimately he went to the uh, place Nineveh and preached the word and uh, we saw that God saved 1,20,000 people there. Uh, regarding number 6, uh, in the book of Job chapter 5, 19 says, He shall deliver thee in six troubles. So God only puts you in different troubles. But he says, uh, these are a part of our Christian life. So in troubles, we must uh, not leave God. We must continue to serve him because he always tried to test every believer. So therefore, in that testing, many has gone back. Many left Christ and so many things you will see there. Therefore, it is said in the Bible and that's where Job also went through so many troubles but he kept uh, having faith in God he said in this flesh I shall see my God for my redeemer liveth so that's what uh, you see there six troubles we face in our life then finally we see that in Revelation chapter 13 18 uh, 666 is mentioned it's the number of a man so three sixes you see there 666 six, six, there are three sixes because man was created on the sixth day and this 666 six, six is the number of a man so this is all about number six man under sin is imperfect now when man is under sin imperfect again as i said when that one comes in six he becomes seven so imperfect man becomes perfect so when we when we go to the next Number that is the number seven. Number seven speaks about perfection. It is one of the important number in the Bible. Next week we will see exclusively on number seven. But here number seven, uh, when I say it is a perfect number, in the Bible there are seven acts of God. Uh, in uh, Psalm 103 verse seven the acts of God is mentioned second time mighty acts are mentioned in Psalms 106 verse 2 third time great acts are mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 7 fourth righteous acts are mentioned in Judges chapter 5 verse 11 fifth time strange acts are mentioned in Isaiah chapter 28 21. Six time terrible acts are mentioned in Psalms 145 verse 6 and in the New Testament 
we see the book of acts we should be uh, appropriately called the acts of the apostles uh, which uh, is mentioned there but it should be called acts of the holy ghost in the apostles so all the acts of the holy ghost in the apostles is seen in the whole book of acts so this is seven acts of god first is the acts second is the mighty acts third is the great acts four righteous acts fifth strange acts six terrible acts seven acts of the apostle that is acts of the holy ghost in the apostles another thing that you see in the new testament you will see that same seven things in the bible so seven same thing uh, first is same mind uh, paul is talking to the corinthian church in one uh, verse corinthian 1 verse 10 says uh, we must all speak the same thing that there should be no divisions among you and that you be perfectly joined together with the same mind with the same judgment judgment means same opinion so here in this very chapter uh, 1st corinthian chapter 1 verse 10 there are three things same mind same thing same judgment fourth thing uh, in 2nd corinthian 12 18 it is mentioned same spirit so we must have the same spirit because there is also evil spirit that's why we must have the same spirit speak the same thing but we see today each church is speaking different that's not what the apostles were doing they all had the same doctrine same teachings everything was same but here over a period of time everything changed that's why it says we must have the same spirit mentioned in second corinthian 12 18 the fifth thing is same steps again mentioned in second corinthian 12 18 same steps then sixth is same rule philippian 316 we must have the same rule seven same love not different love same love philippian chapter 2 verse 2 so these are the seven same things in the bible same mind same thing same judgment that is same opinion same spirit same steps same rule and same law so everything has to be uh, the same but today what we see in the world is everything different that's why we need to come back to the same mind and uh, we must all speak the same thing and uh, have the same spirit and the same law same steps same rule all has to be the same that is another perfection that you see about seven the third thing we see in revelation chapter 5 12 when you read it see how palmeni has uh, put this word so that you may able to understand in uh, revelation 5 12 says saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive number 1 power number 2 riches number 3 wisdom number 4 strength number 5 honor number 6 glory and number 7 blessings see how it has been arranged if you minutely see then you see seven things there if you keep reading like that you may not see it you may miss it but if you diligently seriously uh read it then you will see this numerology as you read the scriptures that's why i said earlier that you will see many threes and sevens in the bible as you keep reading the word of god that's the beauty of this great word god has given us so i showed you seven things uh, in revelation chapter 5 12 so this is all about seven uh, next week we'll see in detail about seven because that is one of the most wonderful number in the bible uh, god loves this number very much that's why you see so many times from the book of genesis to the book of revelation this number seven runs down now we go further uh, now we'll see about number 8 number 8 speaks about resurrection and it is also a new beginning that is the first day again so it is a new beginning uh number 
everything is new uh, it's the first day of the week after seven days we again come back to the eighth day which is the first day so everything becomes new now leviticus chapter 14 verse 10 and 11 says when a man is suffering from leprosy uh, he is cleansed on the eighth day so the leprosy now leprosy is also a type of sin we have a leprosy that is not seen normally a leper you can make out is a leper but we as uh, people in the world we have got leprosy inside our heart inside our mind so that leprosy has to be cleansed it is to be cleansed on the eighth day means the new beginning has to come through Jesus Christ when you believe him so the leprosy the sin can be cleansed when you believe the blood of Yahshua the Messiah that is shed on the cross of Calvary so that you may be cleansed and become pure in Christ Jesus. 2 Peter 2 5 says and spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person a preacher of righteousness bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So Noah was the eighth person uh, in the ark and it was a new beginning uh, it was a type of a resurrection a new beginning then in John chapter 20 26 says and after eight days again his disciples were with him and Thomas uh, with them and uh, Yeshua the Messiah appeared unto them on the eighth day so therefore number eight speaks about resurrection or it is also speaks about new beginning number nine next we'll see about number nine number nine is finality the final things that's why you see that uh, so leviticus chapter 23 32 says it shall be unto you a sabbath of rest and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at even from even unto even shall you celebrate your sabbath so it is to be done on the ninth day uh, during the time of the feast of atonement or the feast of Yom Kippur day another thing in the bible uh, when you read 1st Corinthians chapter 13 it speaks about charity the whole chapter is on charity now that word charity is mentioned nine times in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 the word charity again it means agape love or affection so another word for love it is charity so therefore this is mentioned nine times in 1st Corinthians chapter 13 then in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23 it speaks about the nine fruit of the spirit first one is love second is joy third is peace fourth is long suffering fifth is gentleness sixth is goodness seventh is faith eighth is meekness ninth is temperance temperance means self-control against such there is no law so these are the fruit of the spirits so this fruit has to be seen in our life so we must change uh, ourselves and we must instead of having hatred we must have love uh, we must have joy we must have peace long suffering that is we need to many a times in our Christian faith we need to suffer long to achieve something good in our life the fifth thing is gentleness that is we need to be gentle uh, from there the word gentleman came sixth is goodness we must have the goodness of God and we must also do good seventh is faith without faith you cannot please God eighth is meekness that is humility Ninth is temperance that is self-control. So all these are the nine fruit of the spirit, fruit of the Holy Spirit and that has to be in our life. Many a times people believe but this uh, fruit of the spirit is missing. That's why 
our old Adam's nature has to change and all these fruit of the spirit should be seen in Christian life which many a times are missing. That's why we need to see that these are all there. When we are in troubles and uh, you see that this fruit of the spirit is missing, a lot of time people fight and uh, against one another. Even in the churches that you see all these things that all need to change and uh, this fruit of the spirit has to be there. Not the works of the flesh. All the works of the flesh has to be destroyed so that the fruit of the spirit may remain in you. So that is finality. That is number 9. Now we move to number 10. Number 10 is man's responsibility towards God. That's why God gave to the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 20 verse 1 to 17 when you read God gave 10 commandments to the Jewish people. Now first five commandments pertain to God next five pertains to the neighbor that's when the New Testament he reduced it to two and uh, ten commandments were given to the Israelites in the Old Testament in Luke chapter 17 verse 12 you read that ten lepers came to the Messiah to be healed and Yashwa the Messiah healed everybody all the ten, but only one came to give thanks. Nine never came back. Now that is the way most of the Christians, even today, when God heals you, then people forget God. As long as healing has not taken place, they will keep calling God. Once people are healed, they never turn back to God. So a lot of people come to church for healings. And after they are healed, you won't see them again. That should not be. Healing is just to turn you to God. Healing cannot take you to heaven. So therefore, here you see that ten lepers came. All were healed. But only one came to give thanks unto Almighty God. Another thing that you see about ten is, when you read Acts chapter 1-3, Jesus Christ appeared unto them for 40 days. Then in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 you see Pentecost which is the 50th day. So there is a time between 40 and 50. So that is 10 days. So 40 plus 10 is 50. What did, what did the disciples do? So the 120 fasted and prayed for 10 days. And that's how they received the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. So that is not mentioned but you can uh, see it here that there are many things God writes in such a way that you can uh, see it. So 40 days is mentioned, 50 days is mentioned. So the middle God says you fill up the uh, blank and that is 10 days uh, when the uh, 120 fasted and prayed. So that is all about number 10. So now we move, move to number 11 in the Bible. Number 11 is disorder or discord. Uh, when you study the word of God, 11 is mentioned 24 times in the Bible. And the 11th is mentioned 20 times in the Bible. So totally it is 44 times, which is 11 into 4 is 44. So therefore, 11, you see that uh, it is discord or it is disorders. We'll see some example in the Bible. In 2 King chapter 24, verse 18 and 19, uh, Zedekiah was 21 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. Verse 19 says, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. So these 11 years that he reigned, he did all evil in the sight of the Lord. In Acts chapter 1, 26, uh, you see that they gave for their lots and the Lord fell upon Matthias. And he says that he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now Peter 
made a big mistake there uh, because he thought that he is the first apostle and the one is missing that is Judas Iscariot so he wanted to bring the one person so that uh, the twelve apostles will be there so that's why he cast lots and it fell upon Matthias but you don't see anything about Matthias because God has already selected Paul to be the twelfth apostle now Peter uh, though there are scriptures in the Bible in the book of Psalms that the place of Judas is created somebody else will take it there is a scripture there but yet uh, Peter failed to see that and he by his own mind appointed somebody cast lots prayed for him for God never heard that prayer and uh, we see that later on when Paul was converted he was the twelfth disciple so when they were eleven uh, there was discord in the life of Peter disorder because Peter make a Peter made a big mistake in uh, not knowing God's will and doing something of his own mind so this is all about number 11 as we move to number 12 number 12 is the number of the government and that's why you see that uh, many places societies they have 12 members office bearers all these things are from the Bible so that is a government governing body that's why you see that in Genesis chapter 35 verse 22 12 tribes are mentioned then uh, when you read Job chapter 32 38 verse 32 Job 38 verse 32 says about Mazeroth that Mazeroth is the 12 zodiac signs so on, when you look up you see 12 zodiac signs when you look in the Old Testament you see 12 tribes and when you look to the New Testament in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 to 4 you will see there are 12 apostles and when you read Revelation chapter 21 verse 21 there are 12 gates uh, were 12 pearls so here you see that this 12 is the government number that's why you see 12 zodiac signs when you look up when you look to the Old Testament there are 12 tribes so when you look to the New Testament you see 12 apostles so this is a, a government number governing body so that is number 12 now we move to number 13 number 13 is the number of rebellion uh, also number 13 is also for God also because there are 13 attributes of God but majority of the time that you see uh, number 13 speaks about rebellion uh, in Genesis chapter 14 verse 1 to 4 when you read it there were 5 kings uh, who fought with 4 kings and verse 4 says 12 years they served Kedar Leomar Kedar Leomar was the king of uh, Elam so these 5 kings were under them and he says 12 years they served, served Kedar Leomar and in the 13th year they rebelled so that's how this number 13 speaks about rebellion that's why most of the people don't use this number 13 they think that it is a number of the devil many societies when they number the flats they don't give 13 number uh, many hotels don't keep 13 number 13 number room is not there sometimes so you see that this is because of that fear that something untoward may happen and the one important thing that you see that when you read in the Bible there are many uh, chapters especially the chapter 13 there are 13 chapters in the Bible and uh, these are all uh, specifically number 13 that is the 13th chapter of that particular book like when you read Genesis chapter 13 uh, you see that something against God is mentioned so first time it is Genesis chapter 13 
second time leviticus chapter 13 uh you see about uh, leprosy and all those things is mentioned there third time numbers 13 fourth time deuteronomy chapter 13 fifth time 1 king 13 sixth time isaiah 13 seventh time jeremiah 13 Eighth time Ezekiel thirteen, ninth time Zechariah thirteen, tenth time Matthew thirteen, eleventh time Mark thirteen, twelfth time Acts thirteen, thirteenth time Revelation thirteen. So all these books, the thirteenth chapter, when you read closely, you will see that something against God, rebellion. You see there. something against god's commandment all these chapters you see that uh, it is mentioned there so that's why you can go through this so that is number 13 which speaks about rebellion as we move to the last number number 14 number 14 is the number called service uh, in genesis chapter 31 verse 41 jacob served laban For fourteen years, for two daughters of Laban, he served uh, Jacob. Served fourteen years, so it is a service. Now, in Numbers chapter twenty-nine, verse thirteen says, uh, during the feast of Tabernacle, which is for eight days, uh, seven days they use seventeen lambs uh, every day for sacrifice. you can read in 29 chapter 13 onwards you see that every day the seven first seven days uh, they use 14 lambs for sacrifice it is a service man does to god so that's why there are 17 lambs every day when we come to the new testament matthew chapter 117 there are 14 generations from abraham to david then there are 14 generation from david to carrying away into babylon and again from carrying away into babylon to the messiah it is 14 generation so totally 42 generations uh, which is when you divide it you see that 7 into 6 is 42 so therefore this is a service is a number of the service so today uh, i have showed you about numerology which is very important because god is the one who uh, brought all these numbers in the bible so in the first chapter of the book of genesis you will see that god introduced these numbers and through that a lot of people have become mathematicians and uh, they think that it is uh, because of their brain but it is god who gave this wisdom and god who started it all the numbers and if you would not have given the number we would not have known the max or the arithmetic so it is god who has done it so all glory must go to him that's why in psalms 92:5 we read the beginning o lord how great are thy works so this is one of the works that he has done and palmani has done a very wonderful work as you see that there are many uh, angels in the bible each one was designated uh, something to do like michael was a uh one who will always uh fight the war lucifer was a messenger sorry lucifer uh was the one of the uh most uh beautiful angel he was close to god but he went against he became a devil uh then you see that uh, gabriel is a messenger sending messages so like that's why we said we said kalmani was delegated the work of numbering in the bible that's why is called the wonderful numberer that's why you see this numerology in the bible and that's why uh, we need to understand that god has mentioned all these things in the bible so that man must always give all glory to god who has written everything and all the knowledge that we have it is through him and it is from the word of god that's why bible is a complete book and the whole bible is full of uh, numerology and that's why when you study deep you will see all those things especially uh, hebrew and greek so that god may 
able to bless you. So study the word of God seriously. Bible is beautiful. Everything is mentioned. So this is about numerology and numeric. Next week we will see about uh, number 7. So study the word so that God may be able to bless you and give all glory and honor to him because he is the one who does everything. He is the one who wrote everything. So he is the arithmetician. He is the mathematician. So all glory must go to him. Not the wisdom that we have. It is all God given. So before we could wind up, let's pray for all those who may be uh, sick, who may be in troubles and anxieties and worries. Uh, we pray that God may heal them and bless them. So let's close our eyes, uh, bow down our heads and let's pray. Father in heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Almighty God, today we saw through the scriptures that thou art wonderful, thou art the mathematician, thou art the arithmetician. Lord, the God introduced all the numbers. We give all glory to you. What all we know, it is all because of thee and through thy great word, Lord. In this time, Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, who are in troubles, anxieties, worries, tensions, or what will be their problem, Lord, we pray in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. God Almighty, heal them. Forgive all their sin, shortcoming, failures and wrongs. Wash them, cleanse them through the precious blood of Yahshua the Messiah. Make their life holy and clean. Accelerate thy Sarah as a living sacrifice, Lord. Thank you for the word. Thank you for all the understanding. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. We give all glory to you. We commit everything to the hand. By all parts of darkness, none of those evil force may have power. That your great name be exalted, Lord. Thank you for everything. In Yahshua HaMashiach's name we ask. Amen. So we once again thank you for listening to the word. And... Uh, May the good Lord bless and keep you till we meet again. God be with you. Thank you very much. God bless you.